I don't know why, but in the morning when I drink coffee, I start itching. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Comments with Cruise Man. This is our second episode. I want to welcome you. I am Cruise Man, and let's start the show. I want to let all of you know, if you've never watched uh, any of my videos before, basically we talk about motorcycles, motorcycle maintenance, accessory reviews, motor vlogs, just all kinds of stuff. So if you like that sort of thing, think about clicking that subscribe button down below. And if you click the bell icon, YouTube will let you know when I come out with new videos. But this is my second episode of Coffee and Comments, and this is a kind of a monthly thing I'm going to try to do for a while, see how it pans out. It seemed to be fairly popular the last time we did it. And we're just basically going to go through some of the comments that you guys have left me on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or whatever, or emails you've sent. I do get a lot of emails, believe it or not. And I want to start out this time by saying uh, I know a lot of references I make are pretty specific uh, to the U.S. market. I may reference products or techniques or whatever it is. And I have to recognize that about 30% of my viewers are now international from just all over the place. United Kingdom, uh, Canada, France, you name it. Dubai, just all over the world. And which is great. I love that. But uh, Please forgive me if I make reference to things, uh, whether it's temperature or dollars, or I may even talk about products that are only available in the U.S. and Canada or just in U.S. So if that's the case, I apologize. So thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Let's get right into it. I've got my laptop here and I've got some of these comments that I picked out. Oh, wait a minute. I just remembered something. Hang on. Some of you made fun of me last time, last month, for uh, reaching around scratching my back on video. So I brought my back scratcher with me. So I don't know why, but in the morning when I drink coffee, I start itching. I, did any of you have that? I don't know if it's because it's dry this time of the year or what it is, but I've got my back scratcher. So no more complaints. And this has a little duck on one, and I'm not sure what the duck does. But the little looks like a little monkey hand on the back. <laughs> and it works pretty good. So anyway, I'll keep that handy in case we need it. So first uh, comment today is from Steve Dwayne. And he asks, this was a YouTube comment. Where did you get the reflective, I'm assuming it's reflective, Goldwing stripe for your rim? I think he watched my uh, wheel cleaning video. And they're not reflective, Steve, first of all, they're not reflective, but they do come from Honda, and I ordered mine through CycleMax.com. So uh, check that, uh, check CycleMax.com, they should have those reflective, or those uh, wheel stripes, I should say, they're not reflective. But somebody used to make some reflective uh, stripes for the motorcycle. I'm not sure if they still make them. If any of you know if there is a reflective stripe for the wheels, put it in the comments down below, I'd like to know. Okay, then we go on to Ronald Bauer. Ronald said, somehow you come off as way too goody two-shoes and bitchy at the same time. Go ride the thing and shut up. Okay, well, thank you, Ronald, for that. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know about the goody two-shoes thing. I haven't heard that term in about 30 years, but okay, whatever. Steve Ripper says, I could be wrong, but I believe the downside in waiting to buy the Honda Extended Warranty uh, will be the increased price at a later date. Uh, that's actually true. I did a video recently on buying the Extended Warranty, and I think I mentioned that you don't have to buy it until your factory warranty expires after 36 months. But he makes a very good point you're running the risk that the cost of the warranty from Honda will go up in that amount of time. And that actually happened to me. I was going to buy my extended warranty about uh, six or eight months ago. And when I contacted Carter over at Blue Ridge Power Sports, she did tell me they just had a price increase. So 
you do run that risk. So you just have to decide, is it worth it to go ahead and get the, the warranty now? Or is it uh, to go ahead and wait? Just It's up to you. But that's a very good point, Steve. Thank you. Uh, Jason Grant says, your channel had a huge impact on me purchasing my dream motorcycle, a 2018 Honda Goldwing DCT. I have a question for your next coffee and comments. Okay. Is it common for the 2018 Goldwing DCT to chug or seem a little rough when going from riding speed then coming to a stop? Can the downshifting be smoothed out? It is common. Unfortunately, Jason, uh, especially the faster you de uh, deceler decelerate. Um, it seems like if you decelerate slowly, it's not as bad, but it's got to go through a lot of gears. Uh, so if you're riding, say, 40 miles an hour, you may already be in sixth gear. So when you come to a fairly rapid stop, it's got to go from sixth gear down to first gear, and you get that that what seems like a chugging or a, a jerking. They did, I think, or my opinion is, they did smooth that out a little bit in the 2020 Goldwing when I test rode it last year. It did seem a little better to me on that downshifting, like they had smoothed it out a little bit. Uh, but I don't think there's anything that can be done for the 2018 or 2019 to uh, mitigate that issue. So anyway, oh, and by the way, uh, by the end of this video, I am going to announce the winner of the Super Clean giveaway. So don't, you know, don't turn this thing off yet. Hang around till the end of the video. We will announce the winner of the Super Clean drawing. Okay, so let's go on to Hornet 224. Oh yeah, I like to find a working product for paint chip protection. Also, what you find work on headlight cover restore. Uh, that could also work good on motorcycle windscreens. I think what uh, he's asking first is how to protect from paint chips. You could, of course, use uh, the clear bra type material, uh, the, the paint protective, the film. Uh, you could apply that to prevent. That's the only way I know of to really protect your paint from chips would be to put some sort of a clear film like from 3M or one of the other companies. As far as a headlight uh, restoring product to get rid of scratches or uh, haze or whatever, crazing on your windshield, I don't know if any of those would work. Probably need to ask Don over at F4 Customs. He would be probably qualified. He would certainly be qualified to answer that question. I would hesitate to do it. A lot of these uh, windshields have a coating on them. And obviously, that's going to strip off that coating. So I just don't know what the what the uh, effect would be of of basically your sanding or grinding off, polishing off uh, the surface of that windscreen. And I'm just not sure how it would react to that. So I don't want to I don't want to say that would work, but it's possible. I don't know. I just I'm not that familiar with it. Graham Holmes. What things do you find important for a riding jacket and pants? Which do you use and enjoy? Well, I have been wearing an Olympia, yellow Olympia riding jacket for years. I don't even remember how long. It's been a long time. I think before that, I was wearing a um, Tourmaster jacket. But once I started wearing the Olympia, it just fits me right. I, I like the fit of it for me. Uh, I like the... the uh, uh, recognizable yellow. It's very easy to see when you're riding. And I also wear Bon Armor underneath my pants, my riding pants. Well, sometimes I just wear jeans, but I'll wear the Bon Armor underneath. That stuff is incredible. It's very comfortable and it provides great impact protection. Uh, when I'm on a road trip, I will sometimes wear riding pants from Olympia that are also uh, kind of a mesh, especially if I'm riding in the summer because uh, they do let a lot of air through, and I'll wear the Bon Armor underneath the riding pants. Uh, I have been known to wear the Bon Armor uh, top underneath my Olympia riding jacket. I'll take the pads out of the riding jacket because the Bon Armor pads are just so much more comfortable, and I feel like they offer better impact protection anyway. So I hope that answers your question. I also wear, I believe they're Tour Master boots. 
I'd have to look and see. I did a I did a video on my boots one time, and the gloves I wear are from Cycle Gear, and I can't remember the name of them, but I think I talked about that in a video as well. So look at my videos and see if you can find the boots and gloves video, and I talk about that. Okay. Clarence Jackson says, how do you feel about adding hilly bars? Um, I, I guess it's fine. I, I, a lot of people have Healy bars and they love them. Uh, I have never ridden a bike that has Healy bars on it. I've never installed Healy bars, but uh, I hear a lot of good things about them. I think the concept is certainly good. Uh, for those people that maybe have shorter arms and they need uh you know, they need the handlebars to come back a little bit or they need to be raised so that they can get a better reach. No, I, I don't seem to have a problem with it. It looks like a very well-made product, that's for sure. So glad I purchased my 2018 Goldwing DCT. I bought it used a month ago and it only has 2,000 miles on it. When do I need to get the first oil change? Well, I would go ahead and change it because I believe it's a good idea to change the oil Within the first 1,000 miles, you've got 2,000. So yeah, go ahead and change it. Um, that's just my philosophy on a new motorcycle, a new product. Go ahead and change the oil within the first 1,000 miles and change the filter as well. You have to pretty much change the filter with the oil. So that's just, uh, I believe that's important. That's just my philosophy. Honda didn't say you have to do it, but it, you know, I go by the old rule that fresh oil and filter never hurt an engine. John Connor asks, Chris, what has been your experience with oils in the DCT? Are there warranty concerns? I'm a couple of thousand miles away from my next oil change and want to know if I can consider alternatives to Honda brand oil. Uh, there's no warranty concerns to my knowledge about using any oil as long as it meets Honda's specifications. So if you look in your owner's manual, it will I don't know the page right off the top of my head, but uh, it will give you the specifications to look for on the oil you know, to use in the bike. If Honda didn't assume people were going to use a different oil, they wouldn't have put those specifications in the owner's manual. So there are many oils out there that meet Honda's uh, specifications. So there's certainly no warranty concern over that. The main thing you want to do is make sure you change your oil and your filter on a regular basis. I would, on the other hand, stick with the Honda filter. Uh, I have tried other filters in the past, oil filters, and I'm just, I know, I, I'm just not comfortable using a different filter. I know the Honda oil filters are a little more expensive, but um, I use Honda oil filters regardless of what oil I'm using. Okay, Larry, I have a maintenance videos for my 2019 Goldwing. Which one has the directions for where to position the scissor jack? I just looked this up yesterday for somebody, and I think it's video number 54, but don't quote me on that. Pretty sure it's 54, but I may be, I may be, oh, let me look it up. I've got a computer here. I've got the internet. Let me just go in and look real quick to see what it is. It's actually number 52. So video 52 is front wheel removal and install. And on that video, I show how to use the scissor jack. Sorry, I, I had it wrong. Biker Guy asks, how far can you ride your bike after jump starting it? Um, indefinitely. Once you get the motorcycle started, as long as your alternator is functioning properly, uh, you should be able to ride the bike as far as you need to. Uh, now, once you turn the bike off, you may not be able to start it again because the battery may be completely dead. It just may not be doing anything. Okay, this I think is an email or maybe a comment from my website. Hi, Cruise Man. Uh, love watching your YouTube blogs. Any idea how to repair the latch on a 2015 wing trunk latch? The screw holes are stripped. And I'm wondering if I fill the holes with JB Weld and re-thread. I just ordered my 2021 black Goldwing. Okay. I'm familiar with that problem. I had the problem on my 2012 Goldwing uh, in the trunk. One, you know, the, the uh, self-tapping screws from Honda sometimes tap into like a plastic boss. And uh, occasionally those can get stripped out. Now, I don't know about JB Weld. I'm not sure. That may be overkill. 
Uh, you could probably put some sort of a liquid plastic that would harden and then drill it out with a small drill and then just thread into that. You could try JB Weld. I uh, don't know. I've never done that. I have uh, taken a cable tie and just cut a little piece of it, just cut a little piece of the strip of the cable tie and just kind of shimmed it up in there, put it up in that uh, stripped out hole and that gives it enough plastic, enough meat for that screw to bite onto. I've done that before. So uh, try the JB Weld. You can let me know. I, I don't know if that could mess something up. I'm really not that familiar. But if any kind of a liquid plastic uh, or something that would you know that you could easily drill out should work. Uh, that was from Dan uh, Doug. I'm sorry, Doug Rogel. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Bill Williams, great job, Chris, on the Turtle Wax Hybrid Solution. I'm impressed. Do you need to use a clay bar or anything to remove all the stuff that is accumulated on the paint? So he's talking about my recent video where I removed the scratches from Don Smith's uh, saddlebag. And uh, I am going to be doing a new video very shortly uh, on using a clay bar, and I'm going to be reviewing a, a product from Griot's Garage while I do it. Uh, he raises a good question. Yes, uh, you probably should use a clay bar to remove any contaminants from the clear coat before you go through the polishing process. The reason I didn't do it is because I had washed and clay barred Don's bike a few months ago, and I didn't feel like it was necessary. So that's the reason it wasn't done in that video. For those of you who don't have any idea what I'm talking about with the clay bar, uh, I will do a whole video on clay bar and we're leading up to a, uh, a point, you might say, where we're talking about how to protect your paint and actually the best way to apply paint protection to your clear coat. And clay bar is one of those uh, subjects, so we will be covering that very, very soon. And if you like those detailed videos, you need to let me know in the comments because uh, it takes quite a bit of work to do these videos. So uh, let me know if that's a subject you're interested in. And I should also mention that anything that I talk about on a, on a, uh, a motorcycle detailing video pretty much is going to apply to an automobile as well. So you can use these same techniques and these same products on your car. In fact, they're developed for cars, really. We're just using them on a motorcycle. In just a second, I'm going to come back and we're going to pick a winner for the Super Clean drawing. And by the way, I want to thank Super Clean for providing the products for this drawing. They're going to ship it out directly to you. I just used a random number generator to pick out the winner for the Super Clean drawing. And I don't know if I want to mention the name until I get permission, but uh, the his first name is Michael. And actually, he lives in Texas, so or he appears to be from Texas because his uh, he had some like uh, like a signature on his email, and it put in there the where he lives or his address. So I will send Michael an email right now, get his information, and make sure it's okay if I mention his name on a future motor vlog or video. And so I want to congratulate Michael. He's from Krugerville, Texas. If he sends me back his uh, shipping address, uh, I will get this over to the people at SuperClean and they will ship your uh, box out to you with a bottle of the all-wheel cleaner and the aerosol version of the SuperClean degreaser. So anyway, thanks everybody that entered the drawing. Somebody also posted a comment saying that I was just going to use this as a way to collect email addresses uh, for marketing purposes. Uh, if I were going to do that, I would let you know that up front or I would give you an opportunity to opt in or opt out. All of these emails are going to be trashed. I will not use these email addresses for marketing purposes. So just so you know, I want to make sure that's clear. I want to thank you for joining us today on Cruise Man's Coffee and Comments with Cruise Man. Um, the monkey hand thanks you and uh, he's waving goodbye. And I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs or Coffee and Comments.